morning. I'm Reverend Elliot Robinson. I'm the pastor of Nimno AME Church, and I want to welcome you to our virtual worship experience. You could be worshiping anywhere in the world, but you decided to worship with us this morning, and so we are both thankful and grateful. We are now embarking, embarking upon the season of Lent, and so this is the time in which we begin to prepare ourselves for the coming Palm Sunday, for the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This process that we go through in order to get there, to prepare ourselves for the triumphant return of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so I know some of you are denying yourselves of some things, some things that you want to get rid of, some things that you want to change about your life, about yourself, in order to grow closer to God in this season. And so I encourage any and everyone to use this time as an opportunity to draw closer to God. But as you know, if you've been listening, that's really my desire for us every week is another opportunity for us to draw closer to God. And so I hope that in this season of Lent, you find ways in which to do that, that extend far beyond the boundaries of the Lenten season. So at this time, we're going to have our call to worship where we call our community together, where we can worship God in both spirit and in truth. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song. For he's in marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth, and sing praises. I ask that you now join me in prayer as we lift up prayers for the people of Ukraine. We lift up prayers for the people in Russia who are ardently against war. Prayers for sanity and humanity in our political landscape. Prayers for those still dealing with COVID-19 while we are lifting restrictions. I know that there are other parts of the country that are still dealing um, with COVID outbreaks. Um, I pray that we also have a stamping out of the perpetuation of racial, racial hatred and bias in this country so that we can learn to live together, loving one another in spirit and truth in the Amago Dei, in the image of God. We say we want to be like God and God requires that we do that. So I now ask that you join me in prayer. Lord, we come before you right now this morning, O God, and pleading, pleading upon you, O God, entreating to you, O God, Lord, that you would bring peace in this world. Lord, there are so many more that want peace than those who want war, oh God. Let our voices and our mouths and our minds and our hands and our feet rise up, oh God. That we will not be pawns or puppets, oh God. That we will not be fodder, oh God. That we will not be targets, oh God, of those who are desiring the insatiable need for power and dominance. Lord, we pray, O oh God, your covering, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, dear Lord, for your strength in this season, O oh God, that we might trust and believe, O oh God, that you have what's best for us, that we won't sit on our hands, O oh God, that we won't hold our heads down, O oh God, that we won't shy away from difficult things because we are afraid of the response of others, but that we will be bold in you, O oh God, speaking clearly, O oh God, Doing righteousness, O oh God. Being just with one another, O oh Lord. Lord, that that will be our path. Because you have ordained it so. And so right now, God, we are praying for peace in Ukraine. Peace in Europe. Peace, peace in Africa. Peace in Asia. Peace in North America. Peace in South America. Peace in Central America, O oh God. Peace in Georgia, O oh God. Peace all over the world. Lord, we know, oh God, that there is a 
spirit of evil in the world. We know that it lives and is being fed, oh God. It is growing. But we know that the spirit of love is stronger if we but just use it. So Lord, we pray right now, oh God, that you will continue to unleash that love and that we might decide to sit at that table and be fed and nurtured and strengthened by love that we might turn and go and do likewise to others and keep this world from destroying itself. Lord, we pray for those right now, oh God, who are sick and shut in, oh God. Those, oh Lord, who have lost loved ones, oh God, and who have sorrow in their hearts, oh God. Lord, that you would be, oh God, both a healer and a comforter, oh God. That you would strengthen the caregivers in this world, oh God. That they can lean on you and know that you are with them. Lord, we pray right now for our children, oh God. We pray for their physical health, but their mental health, but their spiritual health, oh God. That they might feel your presence in their lives, oh God. Not wanting to give up, oh God, but reaching out to those whom they love. That might speak a word that can make a difference in their lives, oh God. That, Lord, that when they're crying out, oh God, that, that you just hold them close and they can feel your presence, oh God. Lord, we pray for an increase of empathy in this world, oh God. That we could look at one another, that we can see one another, that we can feel one another. Feel each other's joy, feel each other's sadness, feel each other's pain, feel each other's discouragement, oh God. And have a heart to make a difference, oh God. Lord, we need you. And Lord, we know that you need us to do some things. To do more than sit and complain. But to be your hands and feet in the world. That we might show others another way. Because of the way that you've shown us. Lord, we just... Thank you for this morning. We pray that the word that comes forth will be none of me and all of you, that you would be glorified and we would be edified. Lord, we thank you for this day because we have not seen it before. We will not see it again, but that we do our best with this day to lift you up that others might know you for themselves. Well, we thank you and we praise you, O oh God, for what you have been in our lives. What you are doing in our lives right now. And what you will do in the future. Because what you have done before you can and will do again. We lift this prayer before you in the name of Jesus Christ. The one for whom we recognize in this season of Lent. That he lived, that he died, that he rose again just for us. This prayer is in that name that we pray. Let all God's children say amen, amen, and amen. Today is the day we end our giving campaign for 2022 in support of the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia. I wanna thank everyone who has been able to donate thus far we are excited about what your contributions will mean in the lives of people in Northeast Georgia. Just want to remind you that for every dollar that is donated to the Food Bank of Northeast Georgia, that's four meals, 25 cents per meal to help stamp out hunger in our community. This year, we are matching every dollar donated up to $4,500. So your impact is doubled. You can join us in this work. Today is the last day, but guess what? The campaign will still go on until 12 midnight. Just visit nimnoamechurch.org, nimnoamechurch.org. You can donate through GoFundMe, through Cash App, through Venmo, through Givelify. You can also write a check. And in the subject line, just simply write Food Bank. And the address for Nimno AME Church is on our website, nimnoamechurch.org. Today is the last day, so please help us make a difference 
in the lives of those experiencing hunger and food insecurity. Thank you so much for those who have already given. Thank you for your generosity. May God continue to bless and keep you. And thank you for allowing us to live out our mission at Nimno AME Church to serve as God's hands and God's feet in the world. Thank you and God bless you. As some of you know, it was just the completion of Mardi Gras season. That time that leads us up into Lent. And so you have the Mardi Gras parades with the Mardi Gras beads and the Mardi Gras hats. You also have your Mardi Gras accessories that prepare you for Fat Tuesday, where there is all manner of gluttony and debauchery in preparation for all the things that you will ask God to forgive you for, but then all the things that you will end up having to take away from your life as you prepare to find ways to endeavor to live closer to God. And so you put those things behind you as you endeavor to take away the distractions in life, to take away the things that perhaps move you away from God, things that distract you from God, things that are in your ear or literally in your life <laughs> that are a hindrance to you doing more of what God has called you to do. And so in this season of Lent, which starts on Ash Wednesday, we are moving through the process of finding God's voice. And so in Lent, the Lenten season, it goes from Ash Wednesday this year until April the 16th, which is Holy Saturday, the Saturday after Good Friday, but before Resurrection Sunday. Lent is that time of denial. It's a period that we view as one of transformation. We refer to it as the, the Lenten season because it's, it, it's constrained within a time period. But I believe that it's really more of a Lenten journey. And so this morning, I want to entitle this sermon, The Lenten Journey. Christ's journey to Calvary is a guide for our Lenten journey. So when we look at the life of Christ in preparation for this season's culmination, we can glean and learn some things that will help us during our Lenten journey. When we look at Christ as he raised Lazarus from the dead and then returned to Bethany six days before Passover, he was able to then turn around and spend some time with the family again as Martha anointed Christ's feet with perfume. Christ would go on to heal the blind beggar Bartimaeus and even turn the heart of Zacchaeus, the chief tax collector. The Lenten journey of Christ. Well, as Christ's Lenten journey that we would call it continues, we move into Palm Sunday where Christ is getting more wins. He triumphantly enters Jerusalem. They're looking at him as this conquering figure, someone who will save them from the vice grip of the Roman Empire. And so they threw cloaks on a colt and Christ got up on that colt and he rolled down into the streets of Jerusalem. They laid palm leaves in front of him all along the streets. This glorious, majestic king, humble enough to not be on some conquering war horse, but simply on a colt. And they cheered and they felt that this was their time of independence. And as the glorious procession passed, they shouted out, Bless is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven <laughs> and glory in the highest heaven. 
the Lenten journey. And yet, in the triumphant nature of Christ's entrance, he arrives at the temple only to see that it had basically been turned into a money grabbing scheme. Money changers, cheating the people, uh, an entire industry built up around faith and religion that sought to take from the people and create even greater distance between them and God. And to top it off, you had the scribes and the Pharisees at every turn continuing to plot, scheme, looking for ways to kill this Christ who came and messed up the good thing that they had. And yet here is Christ on this Lenten journey. He would then go on to take his disciples, gather them around, and they would have a last supper. They would break bread. They would drink wine. Christ would say, this is my body broken for you. This is my blood shed for you. This would become what we would now call our sacrament of communion. But Jesus would go one step further and he would then wash the feet of his disciples. Some would say in a way to replicate the act that Mary did in washing his very feet with the expensive perfume. Christ's act of humility was in stark contrast to the ideas that they had about him coming as this conquering king. He had acted in humility in the face of pending trials and tribulations for a second, stopping the chaos that was around him to reset and to be that example. And yet even washing the feet of one who would betray him and also one who would later deny him. Christ's Lenten journey. He would go to pray with his friends in Gethsemane. The weight of his task was great. Christ finds a place to pray and then realizing what would be lost for him, what would be carried by him, he said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but thy will be done. The weight of the coming crucifixion, so great that Christ went to see that perhaps God might change God's mind. But if God did not, he would still be willing to go forward. So anguished was Christ in this moment that his sweat would become like drops of blood falling on the ground. And yet, despite the turmoil and the internal chaos that Christ was feeling in that moment, realizing that he had spent his life pouring into these men. When he had come from the garden, he found them sound asleep. Not praying in unison with him, but catching a nap. Christ, betrayed by one of his closest followers in Judas, denied by the one who said he would die for him in Peter, the Lenten journey. Jesus was brought before a series of kangaroo courts that denied him justice. His life would even be considered less valuable than that of a common thief, forgotten and despised by the people he'd come to help, to love, and to ultimately save. This turn would leave him mocked, stripped of his garments, and nailed upon an old rugged cross. As he faced the precipice of death, he forgives a criminal, then his accusers, then he breathes his last. It is finished. They remove him from the cross and his dead body was prepared with spices wrapped in funeral cloths and buried in a borrowed tomb. The Lenten journey. 
No, there will not be any shouting about the resurrection today. There's a long time between today and April 17th, which is Resurrection Sunday. Long between today and whatever may be resurrected in your life on your Lenten journey. What might be birthed in your life in your Lenten journey. What might be shed from your life in your Lenten journey. What may be happening in your life between today and April 17th. I want you to know that as you move through this Lenten journey, I want you to remember that before there can be a resurrection or a birth or a shedding of some things, there will be challenging times. Instead of doing what we often do, which is focus on what we're going to be giving up during this Lenten time, this Lenten season, perhaps we should be more like Christ and focused on where we're going. Not to dwell on what's behind, but to press towards the mark of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. Yes, in the face of incredible anxiety and, and certain human pain, the likes of which no one would want to endure. Yes, Jesus made a request to see if God did in fact, would in fact, perhaps in fact, change God's mind. And when Jesus saw that there was no other way than the way that was prepared specifically for him, Jesus said, not my will but thy will be done. You too may have a not my will, but thy will be done moment. And you know what? That's all right. You just have to keep pressing, keep walking, keep trusting, keep believing in God. Your Lenten journey may not end on this Resurrection Sunday. And guess what? That's all right, too. The Lenten season may be over, but your journey may still be going. Don't allow what God is doing in your life to be constrained by calendars or seasons. You'll know when this stage of your life's journey is over when it's over. Don't rush it. Just continue to say, not my will, but thy will be done. When your triumphs are followed by others plotting against you, you just have to say, not my will, but thy will be done. When you're called to humility and Christ-like service, in the face of your betrayers, not my will, but thy will be done. When you feel as if the burdens of this journey are just too great to bear, not my will, but thy will be done. When your prayer circle is asleep on the job, not my will, but thy will be done. When the ones you love the most deny even knowing you, not my will, but thy will be done. When it feels like justice and righteousness are eluding your touch, not my will, but thy will be done. When you feel as if you are done, ready to give up, finished. Not my will, but thy will be done. The journey is not over until God says so. The tasks are not over until God says so. God's glorification in your life is not over until God says so. The path that you are on is not complete until God says so. That thing that God birthed in you is not finished 
until God says so. Do not be wary in well-doing. There are some things that you will shed. There are some people that you will shed. There are some things you will cut out of your life. There are some things that you will hold back from saying, from doing, from participating in. And that's all right. You can do it. You can make it. You can get through. Why? Because if you keep your eyes on God, and if you keep your heart turned to God, in this time of journeying, God will get you through. In this time of journeying, God will get you through. Not my will, but thy will be done. When you feel like you want to give up. Not my will, but thy will be done. When you feel uncertain, not my will, but thy will be done. When you're not seeing the results that you expected, not my will, but thy will be done. When the naysayers keep showing up and saying, you don't know what you're doing, not my will, but thy will be done. When God speaks in your life, listen. When God says move, move, God has plans for you if you just believe. On this Lenten journey of shedding, of removing, of stripping away, focus on God. And God will blow your mind. Not my will, but thy will be done. If you are listening this morning and you're wondering about a God whose will is so great that you can let go of what you desire and trust what God has for you, guess what? You can know about that God for yourself. If you confess with your mouth, but first believe in your heart that Jesus Christ lived, died, rose again just for you, the one whom this Lenten journey is all about. And if you are willing to confess your sins, God is ready, willing, and able to wipe your slate clean and forgive you of your sins. That is the blessing of the end of this season. Christ gave it all so that we might have a relationship with God. That's all you have to do. And you too can begin your journey right now today. And we want to hear about it. Reach out to us at nimnoamechurch.org. Let us know that you gave your life to Christ and let us know how we can help you on your journey. We know that God has great things for you if you but just trust God and we'll be with you every step of the way. Today is your day. Don't wait. Don't wait for anyone else. Just come to Christ and Christ will meet you with open arms. This is a journey. No one said it would be easy. Not even the Son of God had an easy journey. So that means we too will not have an easy one. But the blessing is God will be with us in it all and through it all. If we but just trust God and when the going gets tough and when the way seems long, and when it looks as if there's no end to the road, we can throw our hands up and know that God hears us when we say, not my will, but thy will be done. And we will have the strength to continue on the journey. 
trust God in this journey. Now it's time for our Holy Communion, our solicitation. You that truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly bowing, kneeling, sitting, as able. Our general confession. Almighty God, Father our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your, against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who may thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you, and grant that we, receiving these, your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Now that we have renewed our covenant with God, and decided that we will lead a new life and be new creatures in Christ. We will now say the prayer that is the perfect prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory from now henceforth and forevermore amen let's lead a new life in a new way drawing closer to christ the lenten journey it is a journey that each of us is on as we endeavor to have the strength to say, not my will, but thy will be done. That is what we all aspire to. Not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. You can do it. I can do it. If we but just trust God, who knows where we will end up at the end of this journey but we are all prayerful and hopeful that we hear well done my good and faithful servant that's why we endeavor to journey to draw closer to God that one day 
God might say, well done. So keep pressing, keep fighting, keep believing, keep having faith. The race is not to the swift, but to the one that endures until the end. So on this journey that you're on in this season of life, know that God is with you, God is behind you, God is in front of you. God is literally all around you. And God wants you to succeed. I know you can. God knows you can. And just believe in your heart that you can as well. If you but just trust God. Now it's time for our benediction. Now unto the one that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the throne with exceeding joy. To the all-wise God, our Creator, Christ our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now, henceforth, and forevermore, let all God's children say amen, amen, and amen. I love you. God loves you. And there is nothing you can do about it. Till next Sunday, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. Love you much, take care, and God bless.